Hi everyone, I am Adam Rogers with Metro Home Theater Group Tech Support and today I'm going to show you how to set up a uh, Spyclops IP camera with a Spyclops NVR. So we're going to dive right in. The first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to go on our NVR and we are going to go to System Setup. Uh, from this point we're going to go to Network Setup and what we're going to do is we're going to find out what the IP address is of the NVR and it's very important because we want to make sure we're on the correct subnet uh, when we set up the cameras because if we're on a different subnet then we, m we won't be able to see the cameras at all. Uh, so, and for our NVR, we're on the 192.168.135 subnet or suffix. Um, and so at this point, we want to make sure to write that down and memorize that because that's what we're going to use for our cameras as well. Now, of course, this is part two of a three-part series. In the first part, we talked about an IP network and how to get that set up correctly. Uh, and today, we are going to be setting up the NVR uh, directly and the IP cameras directly only with an NVR instead of a laptop. It's still recommended to bring a laptop with you onto a job site. And that way, if you run into any kind of troubles, you have the laptop there to walk in directly. Uh, but this is how you set it up without a laptop. So now that we know what the IP address is, we're going to go from the system setup and we're going to go into the video manage. And from the video manage, we're going to make sure that our protocol is set to default. And we're going to make sure that we're set to manually instead of automatic over here. From there, we're going to hit the refresh button, and what we should see is a couple cameras show up after the refresh. Now, this is after you've already set up the cameras, you've got them all wired in and mounted it in place, everything's powered on, and everything is getting an IP address. Now, the cameras from factory will come with an IP address of 192.168.1.168. So, you, when you get everything uh, set up and you hit this refresh button, normally you'll see a 192.168.1.168 IP address. These cameras here are ones that we use for our testing and for research and development, so they already have a different IP address, but we're going to work with those. So what we'll see here is we have five devices. This NVT is something else on a completely different part of our network. The .135 is part of our research and development subnet, and the .0 is used by someone else in the building. So we want to make sure not to mess around with that. But this is another important note to make sure that we are using the system uh, in a way to make sure that we're not stepping on anybody else and to have that knowledge of the network is very important. So we know that we're in the .135. So our first camera here is .168. What we're simply going to do is we're going to select that camera. We're going to go over here to modify. Now, what we're going to do here, everything is already filled in, but normally what we would do is we change this from 192.168.1. We would change this to our subnet, and for us it's 135. We're going to set this to .81. Now, the reason that we do 80 and 81 is because it's normally an IP address that isn't used by anything else, especially if you have a network with uh, a DHCP range and pool. Normally, that range and pool is going to start at 100. Now, at this point, it's a good thing to mention that if you haven't watched the first uh, portion of this video series, definitely go back and take a look at it because that's going to kind of describe to you how to find out where the DHCP pool is. Uh, just a quick overview, you can use your phone with, a, with the app called Fing, F-I-N-G, uh, or you can use an IP search tool on your laptop. This is a way to kind of find out where everything's at to make sure that we don't step on anything else because not all the time uh, will, it, will 80 and 81 be open. So we just want to make sure that nothing else is using that and the DHCP pool is somewhere else. Now I know our network and I know that that range is open, so I'm going to start with 81. So our subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Uh, that's fine as well. It may be something different, but you should already know that by doing the search tool and the scan tool to find out what kind of subnet mask you should be using. Uh, this is our MAC address of the camera. Of course, we don't need to change this or mess with that. The port is port 80. We want to leave that alone because what's happened is through OnVIF, it, uh, the NVR has already found out what port to use for that camera. So we don't want to change that. Down here at the bottom, we have username as admin and our password is also admin. Now, if there's anything typed into the password field, go ahead and erase it and retype in admin, clicking outside of the keyboard to close that, and then click OK. Now, you'll notice that before we click OK, this says this IP can be used. So this is a nice tool to know that if it's not, if it's an IP address is being used by something else, this will tell us that's, that it's being used by something else. So for instance, if we go here, and we'll do .169, this IP is conflicted, so we don't want to use that one. So it's a nice little way to kind of figure out to make sure that you're not using an IP address that's being used by something else. So we're going to change this back to 81, and we're going to click OK. And it's going to ask, are you sure you want to continue? We're going to click Yes, and then it's going to modify the IP cam parameters. 
Now, what's after this is this should go back to the video manage screen once it's finished, and we'll, mo we'll move on to the next camera. Now, after all of this, we're going to work through e each of the cameras now before we go in and hit refresh and move on to the next one. So we'll go here to, uh, to 169, and we'll go ahead and modify. And we're going to do this to 82. Now, of course, the next IP address is the next one to use. So in our instance, 81, 82, 83, and 84. Uh, if you have more cameras than that, then of course you want to move on up from there. If you need to use a different range, of course make sure you use that range. So from there we're going to do 82 and put in the password. And through the magic of filmmaking, we'll go ahead and cut through to the end when I get through all the cameras. Now click refresh. And what's going to happen is going to find all four cameras that we just set up, 81, 82, 83, and 84. Once it's done searching, simply double click each one and it'll add it into the bottom. After you click each one, it's going to say IPC channel is updating, so you'll have to wait until it's finished before you click the next one. Once you have all four of them in, in the bottom, you'll make sure that the status says something like authentication failed or updating or it'll say connect success. To fix the authentication failed, what we're going to do is go to manual edit. And you'll notice in manual edit, you'll have channel number, uh, protocol, IP address, port, and then below that, you'll have username and password. So in the password field, if there's anything though, anything else there, we're going to erase it and type in admin, A-D-M-I-N, all lowercase, then click copy to, select all, click OK, OK, and OK again. From there, we're going to watch the status refresh on all the cameras. Once all the statuses say I'll connect success, we're going to click OK at the bottom, and that'll take us back to the main screen where we can see all four cameras. If you have any other questions, feel free to visit, visit us at metrohometheater.com or you can call our tech support line at 386-255-0234. Thank you.